Hi guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. This one is a long awaited one and one I actually wasn't exactly sure if I would ever be filming. This is going to be a year update on my perm. So I have a ton of reasons why I wasn't exactly sure if I was gonna be filming this video. One being because I wasn't sure how long it was gonna last. And then, you know, I just, I, I, I didn't know if people were actually gonna be interested in it. The original video was taken very well and you guys seemed really interested. And I'm so glad that you guys overall really liked the video and the perm. I really, really appreciated that. Um, and I decided that I wanted to give you guys an update, let you know everything, my entire year experience of having a perm, because I feel like I haven't seen any videos like this and it's something that I would truly be interested in. Um, I, I always looked for update videos whenever I was looking at getting one, so I thought that I would make one for you guys today. So before we get started in the video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. I know a lot of you guys aren't actually subscribed right now, um, but I do a lot of like hair care, beauty, and skincare stuff. So if you're interested in any of that, then please make sure to subscribe. So if you guys haven't watched my original video, make sure to check that out first. I might be answering some of your questions in that one and also just the basic information about my perm will be in that video. I'm not gonna be addressing any of that in this one. This is mainly just to talk about my entire year experience as well as some questions that I've received throughout the year from you guys on YouTube, on Instagram, um, and just in person as well. So my first question, my most, I think, asked question is where I got my perm done. So I got my perm done in Jacksonville, Florida, and it was at a salon called Hair Piece. The stylist was Savannah. My experience with her was great. Um, the perm was, I think, uh, I'm trying to remember, I think overall with tip and everything, I spent around $300, which honestly, for the prices that I've seen, I think that is an amazing price. And for the results I've had, guys, I think it's really, really good. I guess I'll show you the actual perm right now. So this is first day, like I washed my hair earlier today. It's about 10 o'clock at night. It's been an entire day. I meant to film this earlier, uh, but I did not. But this is what my hair looks like on the first day of wash. It's still pretty curly. You can see I have a lot of growth. So my hair is naturally straight and all of this is about a year of growth and then everything else from there is still curly so the exact date of my perm was september 25th 2019 it is currently september 20th 2020. you can still see that i have plenty of wave in my hair not necessarily curl but the wave is still there and i do have product in my hair if i didn't have any product in my hair let it air dry it would just be a very subtle wave like it's nothing intense for a while during quarantine i wasn't putting any product in my hair and it was just like a soft wave so in order to achieve this type of curl I do put product in it and I still think that obviously my hair texture is wavy. Like you can see that it's, it's pretty wavy. <laughs> Whenever I want more volume, since this part is flat, I do use a diffuser to my hair. I dry it with a diffuser. I try to avoid heat as much as possible, but when I have somewhere to go or something to do or something to film, then I'll take a diffuser to it and then I'll take the diffuser claw or whatever it is and I'll just, push it up like this and dry it that way. And it gives me a little bit more volume. And also as it's drying, I like to move it to the opposite side that I part it. So I usually part to my right. So I'll push it to my left, let it dry like that. So there's a little more volume here. And then I'll put it all back on the side that I want it at. And I just flip flop my hair all the time throughout the day and just get whatever volume that I'm looking for. When I was doing the consultation, I was told that the perm would either last anywhere between three months to six months. Obviously it's lasted a lot longer. Am I mad about it? Heck no, I'm not mad at it at all. I'm actually surprised and very pleased with it. I knew my hair held curl really well whenever I curled it with like a curling iron, but 
I mean, I didn't really expect it to last an entire year. It's kind of funny. The only reason why I ever like pin my hair back now is because of the growth. Like if I wash my hair or if it's like second, third day hair, then I'll just pin it back. And then you can't even exactly tell that the top is like super, super straight. Like it just looks like I, I pulled it back and then, you know, clipped it. Obviously the inside layers of my hair is a lot more straight than the outside. I'm not exactly sure why that is. I think it's just because the rods that were used initially, they were more defined on the outside layer. This is one of my inner layers and this is what it looks like. So it's pretty much straight. It has a little bit of wave to it. Earlier in the day, it has a lot more wave. So when I first wash it and I diffuse it and I put product in it, the entire head is more wavy than this. Um, and then it just drops throughout the day. I definitely, used to be able to go at least three, I wanna say three to four days of just refreshing my hair and it still looked really good in my opinion. Um, but now I can only go about a day or two and then I have to wash it. Another question I get pretty often is, is your hair damaged? The short answer is no, I don't think it's damaged. But the long answer is it has changed my hair obviously and the bonds of my hair, but I don't necessarily think it's damaged it in the sense that people are asking. So before I had my perm, my hair was very oily. My scalp would get really oily. I'd have to use dry shampoo the second day after washing it. I would use so much dry shampoo actually, and it just always looked really flat, which was one of the reasons why I was like kind of gearing towards doing a perm because I just felt like my head looked, or my hair always looked flat onto my, onto my head and I didn't, I didn't like that. But after I got the perm, it actually made my scalp drier. When I say drier, it's not like it was itchy or anything. Like I just noticed that after a few days of not washing it, it would start to flake. And for a while it was pretty bad. And I was like, I don't understand why this is happening. Like I thought that maybe I just wasn't cleansing the product out of my hair enough. But then I realized it's because my scalp in general is drier. So I had to wash it more regularly with hydrating shampoos. Because before that I was using really clarifying shampoos, really, really cleansing shampoos because I thought it was product buildup. But then I realized that I just needed to get more moisture in there. And like I said, it wasn't itchy, it was just flaky. And I had never experienced flaky hair because I had such oily scalp before that. So it was just something new to get used to and to learn how to work with. I actually started using, and I have a basket of curly hair products that I use throughout the year that I'm gonna share with you guys. But I actually started using this line. This is the Shea Moisture Manuka Honey and Mafura Oil Intensive Hydration Shampoo and the conditioner. And I also use the hair mask in place of a conditioner for a while. This helped my hair so much. So if you're struggling with like an itchy or flaky scalp in general, and you're not sure if it's product buildup, try putting hydration in there. It's definitely changed my scalp. I wouldn't say that I'm super concerned about it though, because obviously when you get a perm, you get those chemicals put into your hair and they touch your scalp, they go into your root. So I kind of knew what I was getting into, but I don't necessarily think it's damaged the actual hair follicles because my hair is still growing at a rate that I think is pretty normal and it's pretty standard for me to grow about this amount in a year. The actual hair strands still feel really healthy. Like the new growth as well as the old like permed hair, it still feels really soft. I've been blessed with having pretty good hair and pretty strong hair too. Like whenever I would get it bleached all the time, it still was really healthy. It was still pretty soft. So I don't think that the perm really damaged my hair at all or more than getting it bleached, you know what I mean? Or getting like an ombre or balayage. Like I mentioned in the original video, the type of perm I have is an American Wave. So it's a lot more gentle than a traditional perm. They use different chemicals and it's just, it, it's not as damaging or as stripping to the hair as old school perms, basically. I also got questions about what channels on YouTube I followed for curly hair tips. To be honest, when I was first researching perms, I was watching tons and tons and tons of videos. Just whatever would show up, whichever ones looked promising, I would watch them and then I would go from topic to topic 
literally so many videos before I decided to actually do it. I watched videos on curly hair tips. I watched videos on curly hair styling, on refreshing curly hair. I'll put some accounts that I watched a ton whenever I was like first getting into it. And also just like months in, I was watching a lot of curly hair videos. So I'll put some people that I watched down in the description box below for you guys if you're interested. None of these people actually had perms. They were blessed with gorgeous curly hair, um, which I'm very jealous about. But yeah, I watched their videos and kind of followed through that way. I also got a question, what curly hair tips did you follow? So there are like some tips that I followed and other ones that I found just like didn't work or I necessarily needed for my hair situation. I bought a silk pillow and I've slept on a silk pillow the entire year that I've had my perm. I did a little pineapple on the top of my head where you just like do a little bun and it's really loose so you don't disturb the curl pattern. I don't brush through my hair when it's dry. I always, always do it in the shower with a wet brush. Um, I find that's the only way that I can get my hair detangled. I know a lot of people finger comb and just pull, pull the hair apart but for me i just want to get all of those knots out so i put conditioner in it and then i comb through with a wet brush until it's fully detangled and then i'll just scrunch it up so the curl pattern comes back so all the products i use i try to keep them sulfate free paraben free and phthalate free i've always tried to follow that some of them like i've tested products like here and there that I found or heard are really good. Has it affected your hair growth? No, like I said earlier, I don't think it's affected my hair growth. This is about what it would be and my hair has grown out exactly the same texture that it always has. So my hair is just normal back to what it was. But like I said, my scalp itself has not gotten more oily. I think that it's still like normal to dry. I think actually my most asked question is what products do you use? And I've always, always been really hesitant about answering this question because with a perm, your hair is going to constantly change in texture and it's not gonna get more curly. Like, you know, when someone's going through the curly girl method, it gets more and more curly. No, it's the complete opposite. So you're gonna start off more curly and then it's gonna slowly go through the different types of curls. So I would say I started around a 2A, maybe a 3A, and then I went from 3A to 2A to 1A to wavy. Well, 1A technically is wavy, but you know. So it was a very difficult question to answer because I was constantly changing my products to go with how my hair texture was. So when it was first very, very curly, I was using heavier products. I was using harder whole gel. Um, I was using a lot more layering, a lot more products. And then as the time went by, I would say every three months, I would slightly change what products I was using to accommodate my hair. So right now I put the least amount of product in my hair that I have the entire year because I can't really weigh down my hair too much or else it's just gonna be completely weighed down. I have a basket of products that I think would work pretty well for a multitude of hair types because they're the products that I've used the longest or they just seem to work really well with whatever my hair is going through. So I did want to note that the products that I was initially using whenever I first got my perm were Diva Curl products because they were the most known at the time. It seemed like everyone was using them. It seemed really reputable. So I bought their shampoo, their conditioner, the hair mask and the gel. I bought all those products before I actually found out there was like this entire scandal with Diva Curl. If you guys don't know about it, I will very lightly touch on this. A lot of people came forward and said that Diva Curl was damaging their hair. They were getting hair loss. They were having burning in their scalp. It was a lot of very serious accusations. Diva Curl released an entire statement saying that they never changed anything and that their products were tested and regulated, but there were still people that, you know, were having issues with it. So I did some research, I watched some videos and I got really nervous because, you know, if this was happening to other people, I was already messing with a different type of texture, chemicals already in my hair from the perm, so I didn't want to further damage it. 
Um, so I went ahead and just scrapped all my Diva Curl products. I decided not to mess with any of them. I didn't want to give them to anyone else because if in fact they were damaging to the hair, I didn't want to do that to anyone. So I kind of left them in my, uh, in my bathroom cabinet for a long time and I was waiting to see if anything would come of the Diva Curl stuff and if you could send it back for testing and all that stuff. I didn't really see anything so I just ended up tossing them. But anyways, so I was initially using those products and I don't know if they caused any issues for me because like I said at that time, completely new hair, I was testing new stuff. I like everything was different. Like I never had frizz like that before. So I didn't know if it was caused because of the perm or because of the products. So I'm just gonna completely skip over the Diva Curl era and then just go straight into the stuff that I've been using throughout the year other than that. The one line that I have religiously used is this Not Your Mother's Curl Talk line. This is an amazing line because it works so well and it's very affordable. Here I have the defining cream, I have the curl care shampoo, and then the curl activating mousse. The mousse I think has been my number one product throughout this entire thing. It has really good hold. It does leave a little bit of a cast, but you can scrunch it out and it gives me volume and it's easy to use. I know some people don't use mousse and some people really love mousse. I am one that loves the mousse and I haven't actually tried any other curly hair mousse other than this one because I've just loved it so much. And this I would say, is one that I've used pretty much every time I style my hair. The shampoo is really good. It's a standard shampoo. Um, it's not the most hydrating because this is the one that I was using while I was noticing the flaking. So I moved over to the more hydrating stuff, but I still like to use this every once in a while for a more cleansing clean. I've never used the conditioner cause I just heard it wasn't the best one. So I just didn't really get it. The defining cream I really like to use, especially when I wasn't using a ton of product in my hair. I would normally put this in my hair after washing out my conditioner in the shower. So I would put some in here and then just scrunch it in when my hair is soaking, soaking wet. And then I would get out of the shower and apply the rest of my products. I thought this worked really well for combating the frizz in my hair. Like I said, I started using the Shea Moisture Manuka Honey line, really like this. I used the mask for a very long time at the beginning, and then I switched over to just the regular conditioner. The regular conditioner seems hydrating enough for me, but for that extra deep condition, I definitely do recommend the hair mask because both of them are really great. I actually think I will pick up the hair mask again. I'm currently using the regular conditioner, but I think I just want that extra, like, nourishing touch. This next one is a Wee Dad Advanced Climate Control Restore and Revive um, spray. It's basically just a refresher spray. I do like this. I'm not crazy about it, but I haven't tried a ton of products like these. These are just refreshing sprays. So on two, three, four day hair, I just recently bought the Not Your Mother's Curl Refreshing Foam and I've been trying that one out. That one has a little more hold. I would say that one's closer to their mousse um, than this one, but this is nice if I just have like a halo of frizz and I wanna get rid of it. So I'll spray it on my hair, do some prayer hands down my hair and then scrunch just a bit because if I scrunch too much, I'll bring the frizz back and then I'm like pretty much good. I, I mean, I used to be able to do that and then my hair would look pretty much refreshed, but now it just doesn't really bounce back the same way. So I would use this on days when I'm gonna throw my hair up in a ponytail and I want the rest of my hair to look defined or if I'm gonna clip back like the, the top half. Okay, I have this, there's a hair in it because I used it earlier. Um, I have this Mop Top Curly Hair Custard. I like this product. It's very, very different from other products that I've used. At first, I wasn't exactly sure how to use it. Like, is it a cream or is it a gel? I feel like it's kind of a hybrid. So some people just use this because it does have hold to it, but not enough hold for what I like. So I like to use this on days where I don't wanna use a ton of product. It does smell really lemony and very like lemon, like citrusy. Some people have said that this smells like cleaning product. I could see that, but it doesn't really bother me. It doesn't last in my hair for very long. So you only need a little bit of this and it's just a clear 
you I don't know if you can even see that but it's just a clear product it's pretty runny I would take like a little bit of this rub it between my hands right out of the shower and then I'll do the prayer hands and scrunch it in as much as I can especially on the inside just to get definition I feel like this helps with frizz as well I use this in place of the defining cream sometimes or I'll use it in conjunction with it just depending on how I feel and again like I said how my hair texture is doing and for the gel I have this one this is the dippity do girls with curls defrizz is gel. I really love this gel. It's so good and I actually found mine at Marshall's. I was really hoping to find one. One day I ran into Marshall's like 30 minutes before they closed and I found it and I was so excited. It was months ago that I actually bought this. I think I love everything about this product. It smells so, smells really really nice. It lasts on the hair. It just smells like clean good fresh shampoo a little sweet i really love it the color is just so fun it has really great hold and i can put this on my hair and feel like it's not weighing it down well before i could put my like a ton of this in my hair and feel like it didn't weigh it down now i have to be a little less generous with it but i still don't feel like it's super heavy on the hair it doesn't leave an intense gel cast if anything i feel like this with a mousse that's the most like of a cast that i get and then i can just scrunch it out before this i was trying out the not your mother's one it didn't have as great of a hold and before that was when i was using diva curl so this one has definitely been my number one this and the mousse my number my number ones and twos my number ones and twos <laughs> All right, and then my most recent purchases for my hair, more specifically my scalp, have been this jojoba oil and this tea tree oil. I bought these both at Target. They were very inexpensive. I think they were under $3 each. So I actually bought these because whenever I had that whole revelation about my hair actually, or my scalp actually being dry rather than just having product buildup when I realized that it was because I needed more hydration, I decided that oils would be a good thing to put back into my hair. So jojoba oil is supposed to be really, really great for the skin, really great for the scalp and the hair. And then tea tree oil, it says here that it was supposed to help with dry, itchy scalp. I didn't have intensely itchy scalp, but it was kind of itchy because it was dry. It was nothing that wasn't bearable, you know? I just use a couple drops of each, more jojoba than I do tea tree. So I'll do like three drops of jojoba and then two drops of the tea tree, mix it together, and then I'll just run my fingers all around my scalp. Wherever I feel like I'm the most flaky, I'll add more product there. So I would get really flaky up over here, so I put more product there. I tried it out where I was doing it in the morning to see if it would help throughout the day, but I found for me what works best is doing it on a wash day, and I'll do it about like 30 minutes to an hour before I wash my hair, and I'll just like completely soak my scalp with the oil, let it really, really sink in, and then I wash my hair. That seems to work really well for me. If I can, I'll do it overnight, and that's even better, but I feel like it's really, really helped with the flakes in my hair. I'll, I'll still have like a little bit of dry scalp, but it's nothing compared to what it used to be. And also, like I said, I have to wash my hair more often. So for a while, I was washing my hair maybe every five to six days. I know that seems really long, but like I said, I used to have really oily hair and then I went to very dry hair. So it doesn't seem like I had to wash it very often. And when I would refresh my hair, I had a spray bottle, one of those continuous spray bottles, which I'll link down below for you guys. So I would basically just dampen my entire hair and then just do my routine again, just maybe do the mousse and then some gel and then my hair would look pretty good again. So I wasn't washing it as often, but the longer it's been, the more I have to wash it because I just want that hydration and I feel like my hair doesn't look as good when it's refreshed. I've tried, I think the last time I tried to refresh my hair was about two weeks ago. Um, 
and I, I did the whole method where I sprayed my entire head and then I put more product in it. It just kind of looked heavy. So I find that now I have to actually wash it to get the effect that I want. My last question from you guys is, would I do it again? Would I get a perm again? The answer is yes. So in the middle, like maybe seven, eight months in, I wasn't exactly sure if I would get my hair permed again because of the scalp issues. Because I was like, I don't know why this is happening like if I get it permed again is my hair or my scalp going to be really really flaky like even worse than before but whenever I started to put the hydration in my scalp's been a lot better and now that I kind of know like what's going on with my hair I feel more confident of course I am a little nervous because it is like a second round of the same chemicals that completely changed my hair there's always a risk factor to it you know what I mean like even if you dye your hair you get a balayage you do anything to your hair you always risk something I think the main thing I'm focused on if I do this again is to continue to really nourish my hair and give it good products and really pay attention to it. Um, I do want to get it permed again. I'm just kind of waiting because as you guys know, I recently bought a home, so I'm trying to budget a little better, um, but I would love to get my hair permed again soon because this growth is just a lot for me. I've only straightened my hair maybe twice since I've gotten my perm. And I've been considering straightening it again because of the growth, but I just, I really love the curls. I love the waves and they're just nice. Oh, another thing I wanted to address. Some people have asked me if my hair routine is easier. Not at all. It is way more involved than it used to be because I used to just wash my hair and then let it air dry, that was it. Like I brushed through it and then just leave it alone and it was just straight. Curly hair definitely is more involved. If you want a certain look, you are going to have to use products. You're going to have to pay attention to it. You're gonna have to give it hydration. You're gonna have to give it specific, you know, some hair likes more protein than others. Like it's really a learning curve. And I think you have to be committed. You know what I mean? Like you really have to be committed to curly hair. And if you wanna get a perm because you think it's gonna be easier, don't do it <laughs> because it's not. But I just really enjoy it. I feel like it just gives so much character to the hair. And I, I just really like the way that it looks. It looks more voluminous, at least, well, not right now, <laughs> um, but yeah. All right, that's everything for this video. I really hope that I didn't miss any questions. If I did, please make sure to leave them down in the comments below for me. I am more than willing to answer y'all's questions about the perm and the American Wave experience. I am here for you guys with whatever questions that you have. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope that you're staying safe. If you like this video, please make sure to comment, like, and subscribe for more videos just like this one. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.